after a fairly rocky start, Hyperland quickly became my favourite WL Roots compositor and the option I would recommend to any new Wayland user. Obviously, outside of being a desperate environment user like GNOME or KDE. Now, it's not like it's the only good option. Sway is great for the XI3 users. It is a super set of i3, and your config from i3 is just going to work, outside of obviously the X specific things. LabWC is great for the open box users. River is a simple option with extreme layout customization, and DWL is great if you hate yourself. But for the average user, Hyperland is going to be the best general recommendation. But for the past three or so months, it has been an absolute disaster to recommend on Arch Linux. So I don't think I did a video on this, but a while back, Hyperland moved from the AUR into the Arch Linux extra repos, making it an official package on Arch Linux. And this is awesome to see. I love when a great project finally gets recommendation because it was sitting at the top of the AUR for months and months, and then finally, then it gets to become an official package. And for a while, this was going perfectly fine with no issues at all. Then we hit a really weird point. On September 23rd, we got this update. Update package 0.30.0. .0, and this looks like a totally normal update. And that's because it was a totally normal update. The problem is what happened after this. If we go to the commit history and then go back to the main branch, this update happened, and then there wasn't another update until November 28th. And then the package itself didn't get shipped until December 2nd. So there was a couple of months with no updates whatsoever. Now that would be fine if the project had no updates whatsoever, but during this period, that didn't happen. We had the 0.31.0 release, the 0.32.0 release, the 0.32.1 release, the 0.32.2 release, and then finally, three weeks after it had already come out, the 0.32.3 release. Now, once again, the package is actually out of date. But I will give them a pass for this one because 0.33.0 only came out five hours ago. Totally fair. I'll give you at least like a day or two to get that one. Now, I want to make something very clear. I am not here to flame some volunteer package maintainer who waited a bit of time before updating a package. That is totally understandable. You have real life things to do. That makes sense. And just a few days ago, this merge request was made on the package. Feet bump package to version 0.32.3. The main reason why it was delayed is Vaxry basically fixed the build system. So it went from being garbage to not being garbage anymore. So previously, if you wanted to build it, you would need to do all of these steps. Now it does all of them internally and you just run make release and it just magically does it. That is a big improvement. This merge request was not made by the main package maintainer. Instead, it was made by a third party who was just trying to fix up the package and get it actually working. And when the maintainer saw this, he said, hey, thanks for the contributions and sorry this got so out of date. First it started when I was traveling, then trying to bump it broke my production system, then I got lost trying to find a way to fix Upstream's mess. I'll test out this build and push it through if I can get a working system back out of the deal. Now, by fix Upstream's mess, what he means is Upstream making building the package a thousand times easier, and him not reading the wiki and the readme, which explains the changes and explains how you're supposed to manually build it. But that is not relevant to the video. However, what is relevant to the video is if you wanted to use Hyperland during this period, you couldn't use the package. Yeah, you could run it, but it's a really out of date version that has a bunch of bugs, has a bunch of missing features, and you don't want to be running a three month out of date version of Hyperland. Like this project is constantly being updated, but you did have options. One is to use the Git package which I would highly recommend against doing for something this important. Git packages, you know, tend to have issues that are not available in the release version because the Git package just grabs the latest commit. And sometimes Vax recommits things that probably shouldn't be committed. And it breaks things. And I would avoid running a Git build. 
but that's just me. Maybe you're fine with it. The other option is to grab the latest release and then compile it yourself, which could fairly easily be done with the package build from the Git release. Or if you like wasting your time and redoing things that have already been done, I guess you could follow the manual build instructions and build it like that, but that's what the package build is doing, it's just already written for you. What you couldn't do during this period is make use of a tagged AUR release. So a tag release being like what you would see in the main repos where it is a set version and that is the version you download. Because the version in the AUR, when this version got made, got deleted. The AUR might seem like a hellscape of random packages that nobody knows if they're malware, that nobody knows if they actually work on a modern version of Arch, the package builds half the time are broken for a thing that has like one user in the entire world, but the AUR does have a clear set of submission guidelines. The ones we care about can be found over on the Arch Linux wiki at AUR submission guidelines. There are separate guidelines for maintainer stuff, but doesn't matter for what we're talking about today. And the one we care about is the very first rule. The submitted package builds must not build applications already in any of the official binary repositories under any circumstances. Check the official package database for the package. If any version of it exists, do not submit the package. If the official package is out of date, flag it as such. If the official package is broken or is lacking a feature, then please file a bug report. With the exception to this strict rule, may only be packages having extra features enabled and or patches in comparison to the official ones. In such an occasion, the package name should be different to express that difference. For example, a package for GNU screen containing the sidebar patch could be named screen sidebar. Additionally, the conflicts screen array should be used in order to avoid conflicts with the official package. Along with this, there are things like the NVIDIA version of Hyperland, which had additional NVIDIA patches, which prior to the latest version was required if you wanted to use Hyperland on an NVIDIA card. As it currently stands, I can absolutely understand why this rule with the AUR exists. You don't want the AUR to turn into Ubuntu and PPAs or Fedora and Copper, where there are so many duplicates of every single package that people want to install that users have no idea which ones are actually good to install and which ones are just an absolute waste of time. Yeah, with a bit of research, you can work it out. But if you're a user who is like, okay, I want to install this package. Oh, this is the first thing that shows up. Let's install this one. Turns out that's actually a really out of date version and is not at all the one you even want to think about. Now, this issue with flagging a package out of date is not at all a new issue. There were people complaining about this all the way back in 2008. There were people complaining back in 2021. Is there a process to handle out of date packages? When a package does not get updated, you can flag it out of date. What exactly does this do? Just email the maintainer? What can I do when the maintainer does not respond to email? And I am complaining about it today in 2023. Now, from my understanding, everybody who works in Arch Linux is a volunteer. So when a package is flagged as out of date, that's basically just a suggestion rather than a demand that you have to go and update it. And sometimes things just get left by the wayside and maybe a couple of weeks later they will get updated or in really bad cases like I believe it was GCC a couple of years back, it will sit there for like six or so months. But I do think there is a possible way this can be improved. Because right now, all the users get is an out-of-date package that isn't clearly marked as out-of-date. Like, if you go to the web UI, you will see it. But outside of doing a package search, who is going to the web UI? What I think could be done is, let's say if a package has been flagged out-of-date for a month straight. The exact amount of time doesn't really matter and can be adjusted as it needs to be adjusted. But let's just say a month straight. At that point, let's not delete the package automatically. That would lead to way more disasters. Instead, move the package from whatever repo it's currently in, whether that be the community repo or the extra repo, into what I'll call the archive repo. Once again, the name can be changed. Now, by doing so, users will get an update saying, hey, this package has moved from the extra repo or the community repo into the archive repo 
indicating that this package, whilst not being dropped officially by the maintainer, is in a state where it is out of date and the maintainer isn't looking after it. And maybe an extra repo is just way too much work for this because not that many things would really be in it. Maybe instead of doing that, you can change the name of the package to indicate that this has been archived. Maybe add like a dash archive tag to it so users know, okay, this thing is in like a weird archive state. Now, when something is in this state, this is where you can have some fun. Obviously, if the maintainer is still around and is still actually going to look at the package, somebody can go and submit a merge request to fix up the package and have that merged and have the package be updated and moved out of the archival state. But the other option is if somebody in the AUR, for example, in the case of Hyperland, where the developer of Hyperland used to maintain the AUR package, that user could go and make an AUR package and take back control of the packaging. Right now, the issue is if a maintainer disappears, there's not really anything that can be done about it. You have to just email other maintainers and they have to go and check if that person is still fine. And then if they are fine, well, okay, keep going. But if they're not fine, then you might be sitting with those packages there for like a couple of weeks, a couple of months until things actually all get resolved and someone else has to go and take over the package or maybe then they have to get dropped down to the AUR. It's just like a giant mess. And I feel like there is some sort of automation here that can very much alleviate some of this struggle. Obviously not automating the packaging, but automating telling people that something is wrong with the packaging, so if somebody else wants to take it over, they can very easily go and do so, because right now you gotta be like really paying attention to even know that something is wrong. But look, I don't know what I'm talking about. Maybe my idea in the real world would not work whatsoever, and that's fine, but I am throwing out the idea here because this is a problem that has always existed in Arch, and I would like to see if there is some possible way that this situation can be improved. So if you have a better idea, please let me know down below what it is, and if somebody from the Arch team sees this, I hope you start thinking about, hey, maybe there is actually a problem here, and maybe there is possibly a way it can be dealt with. If there is, I would love to know. So... Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. And if you like the video, go like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, subscribe, and the Libero Pay link in the description down below. That's going to be it for me. And my hair is doing whatever the hell it wants today. So, I'm out.